The Toronto Blue Jays are entering a period of their schedule where it's fairly lighter than what we saw in the early portion of the season. And the time is now for them to start picking up some wins. And this could decide everything when it's all said and done, when we're looking back at the standings at the end of the season. So we'll break that down and much more in this episode of Jays Digest. What's up, Jays fans? I'm your host, Peter Rionis, alongside host Nick Goss. And uh, the stadium is back. I'm in the Olympic Stadium today, uh, broadcasting live from the Big O, which is no longer the home of the Montreal Expos. It was for a fairly long time until 2004, but uh, going back to my roots. I'm a Montrealer. I'm in the Big O today. So even though I was in layover, I was at home the other day. I'm at the Big O today, broadcasting live from there. But uh, welcome in to this episode of Jays Digest, where we're going to talk about the upcoming schedule for the Toronto Blue Jays. And Nick, this is a pretty soft portion compared to the early uh, the early part of the season. And uh, we're seeing the Rays for a three-game series starting tonight. The game is on Apple TV, just a heads up to all you viewers out there. So probably going to be... Uh, not too happy about that, but whatever. You see, so you got the Rays today, you got the White Sox, and you got the Tigers, then the White Sox again, and then the Pirates. So, yeah, it is a soft portion of the schedule, Nick, and the time is now for the Blue Jays to start picking up some Ws, and hopefully they can get it started tonight. But if they don't come out of this stretch with a decent winning percentage and, and decent meeting, like maybe 70% wins, then it could be curtains when it's all said and done. Yeah, we saw some encouraging things in the Baltimore series. Weren't able to get the mini two-game sweep because one of the games got delayed. Before we get into it, quick reminder, hit the subscribe button. We're on the road to 13,000. And Peter, yeah, shout out to him. He's in Montreal in the, in the old stadium before it got taken down. But let's just get right into it. And let's just get – let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right into the schedule. And this is very important for the Toronto Blue Jays. And this is – obviously, it's still early in air quotes. But, Peter, this is as important as I can remember in yeah. recent years, a stretch of games for the Toronto Blue Jays. Obviously, you're playing – an interdivision AL East rival in the Rays today, um, tomorrow, and then obviously Sunday. But the White Sox after that, and then you have the Tigers after that, and then you have the White Sox again after that. And you look at where the standings are. The Jays are probably not going to win the AL East at this point. They need to just push for the wild card spot. They need something yeah. to get them going. You look at their stats so far in May. That's upside down. But the May stats is very, very bad. Their stats in May, they're horrible. They're 4-7. and seven. Their OPS is below 700. Peter, it's, it's time that uh, they step up, and if they don't do it soon, there's going to be a big problem for the Blue Jays because if they can't take care of business against these teams, there is no hope for the team going forward. Yeah, well, I don't even know if them being able to take care of these teams changes that much when we're looking at them as a whole, like at the end of the season. I still don't know if the Jays can compete with the top-tier teams. They haven't proven to be able to do that in the past year plus. So I don't know if this is a – a team defining part of their schedule but it definitely is a season defining part of their schedule in terms of if they don't pick up wins against the white Sox, who look to be one of the worst teams in major league baseball uh, they're going to play six games against them there you go there are the stats right there Horrible. and uh nick also the big o is still up put some respect on uh on the city of montreal it's not demolished no, as there's the just team, no one playing the there's no one playing in there the team is demolished, not the stadium, even though I think it should be demolished. But that's a topic of conversation for another day. But anyways, I, I mean, the Blue Jays got to pick up some wins here. There's there's no way to dance around that fact. And the schedule doesn't get much lighter than this. You got the White Sox, you got the Tigers, the White Sox again. And then you got the Pirates after the second series against the White Sox. And Paul Skeens looked pretty good today. 11 strikeouts in six innings. So hopefully the Jays can avoid him and and suffer a similar fate. But, uh, Nick, the time is now. Like, we've been talking this team up enough. We've been saying that it's going to come, it's going to turn around, but it hasn't yet. And if it's ever going to turn itself around, these are the teams that it's probably going to have to be against because I don't know if the Jays can rattle off three or four straight wins against the likes of the Yankees, uh, the the Texas Rangers, the Baltimore Orioles. I don't think they can do that. So if uh, there was ever a time for them to wake up and smell the coffee, now's the time. Yeah, and I fixed the screenshot. And you look at their record, I mean, this has kind of been the whole point of the season in May. They're 4-7. and seven. You look at the OPS there, it's a little bit cut off. But, Peter, that's back-to-back -back months now where they've been a below 680 OPS team. And it's just – the hitting is obviously the biggest problem here. And 
the record has shown it four and seven and they've had a bit of a rough schedule in may so four and seven wouldn't be the end of the world if they took care of business earlier on in the year against the teams that they were supposed to take care of business against and now is their final not their final chance obviously it's there's still 100 games left which is crazy to say but they need to win these games and I hate putting so much emphasis on games this early in the year, but it just has to be done at this point because they put themselves in this position and it's going to be hard. The AL East is loaded. The Yankees are great. The Orioles are great. Yeah. Even like the Red Sox and, and Rays to a degree are outperforming the Jays now. I don't think that's going to be the case uh, when it's all said and done, but um, you're looking at the lineup tonight, Peter, something has to change. And guess what? George Springer still leading off. George Springer is still leading off, but you could just look at John Schneider's comments after that first game against the Baltimore Orioles, and you could tell how important that win was to them. That was one win 40 games into two the F-bombs. season. And yeah, two F bombs. So that just sh- it shows you the magnitude of that ball game and picking up that win. And you go out the next day and you can't get the job done, but winning just one singular game for this team has been an issue and especially against top-tier teams like the Orioles. So, yeah, even though it is very early and there's still a lot of runway to be covered here by the Blue Jays, I I, I mean, let's go. Let's go. You're not going to get a softer portion in your schedule than this. I I haven't really studied the schedule from here on out till the rest of the season, but I could tell you this. You have uh, three series against AL Central teams. That's uh, that's the baseball gods' way of – letting you back into the playoff race and the blue jays got to take advantage of this enough is enough now enough is enough we're waiting for them to turn this thing around we don't know if it's going to turn itself around but if they want to give themselves a shot they can't play 500 baseball in these next 15 or so games that they have and it's a year where the rays are bad like bad they're not as good as they bad for the rays comparison obviously they're still going to find a way to be but compared for the usual the usual rays a lot better than this. And just one other note, I do like that they moved Varsho down here just uh, discussing tonight's lineup. Bichette's up in the two spot. He's starting to find it. Uh, we need to get Springer out of the leadoff spot. We'll stand by that. And Vladdy in the three spot as well, which is uh, which is something that we saw for the majority of his career. He's finally back where he's had the majority of his success in the major leagues. And hopefully he can continue to, uh, to hit well from there. But... Uh, yeah, let us know what your thoughts are on this. It's a rough time to be a Jays fan right now. We're not going to sugarcoat it for any of you, but Peter, we can take at least solace in, in understanding that the Jays have a chance to rock into the playoffs. So Peter, before we do wrap up this video, it is a short one. They obviously play in a couple hours. Uh, I, we do want to. We, we didn't do this in the stream yesterday. We didn't have a video yesterday. Peter, I'll let you take over just for a second here. Um, Darren, yeah. he. Uh, we all watched him as a kid, or at least I watched him as a kid, and really up until he. Uh, he stopped going in the broadcasting space. Uh, rest in peace to him. And uh, yeah, so everyone leave some hearts in the comments for uh, for Dan. Yeah, thoughts and prayers are with his family, his loved ones, and everyone at the TSN family. So I, for those of you that don't know, I'm I work at TSN 690 Radio, and uh, Darren Detisson was a big idol of mine growing up. He was my favorite sportscaster, and for anyone that got into the business. You looked up to Dutchie and, and you looked up to the guys that were doing Sports Center every morning, every night. And that was a daily routine for me. That that was, you know, you could have a rough day and you could go home and you could rely on watching Dutchie in the morning or Dutchie at nighttime and, and being so enthusiastic and so energetic on the broadcast where he brought life. He brought life to Sports Center, something that is so repetitive, so mundane. Dutchie made it his own, and he was always smiling through it all. So, again, it's a huge loss for the broadcasting world, especially here in Canada. And one of my idols growing up, I always wanted to be a broadcaster, always wanted to be in this space. I'm, I'm very lucky to be doing it right now. I think uh, we all are, Nick. We're very lucky to have a platform and, and we could share our opinions, but it wouldn't be possible without guys like Dutchie and, and Jay Onright and uh, and all the wonderful people in the broadcasting community paving the way for us. So shout out to them and shout out to Dutchie for such a wonderful career and such a storied life that he had. Yeah, and prayers out to, to him and his family. And yeah, hug someone for it. If you're watching this video, go hug someone because, you know, people can leave uh, way too soon. But that'll yeah. wrap it up. Thank you guys for watching and uh, we'll see you tomorrow.